guys, welcome back for another Fundamentals video. My name is Patrick. And I'm Macy. And today we're going to be going through C2 to T2 region, misalignments, scoping, and some motion palpation. So first I'm going to go over it on the spine. Again, we're going C2 to T2. So in this region, we want the patient to be seated on the cervical chair against the backrest so that they're relaxed and their muscles can relax. So the first part of our listing is going to be P for posteriority. So let's say we're doing one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to come up onto the spinous with this digit. And then on the second finger, we're going to go down on the spinous below. So then I'm going to have the patient's head and I'm going to take them back into extension. And what we want to feel is the spinous is approximating, that they're gliding down and back together. So just like this, they approximate. And then for rotation and wedging, we want to be on the inferior lateral side of the spinous process. So I'm going to palpate the right side here. I would again turn the patient toward me, and we want their spinous to go away. So it would be going left as I'm turning their head. Body's going right, spinous is going left in this situation, and then it would be opposite on the other side. And then for lateral bending, when I bend the head toward me, we also want that spinous to go up and away, showing that it has good fluid motion. And next, I'm going to show you on an actual patient. Next, I'm going to show you on Patrick those same motions. So we're going to go up onto the spinous with this finger. And with the other finger, we're going to go on the spinous below. And I'm going to bring him back into extension. And what I want to feel is that top spinous coming down onto the lower one. That again is for the P component. So then for rotation, again, we're gonna to come to the inferior lateral aspect of the spinous. When I turn his head towards me, again, I wanna feel that spinous move that way because as the body of the vertebra is rotating toward me, we want the spinous to go the other way. And then same with lateral bending. I want that spinous to move up and away. Body's coming toward me. Spinous is going up and away. And again, with motion palpation, we want to focus on being light. We don't want to focus on gross movements, moving his head around. We want to focus on just that little bit of movement. We want to feel if the spinous is moving at the beginning of that movement. If we're focusing on gross movement, we can feel it restricted on one side or the other, but are we really focusing on that one segment? So we want to feel it just the slightest movement. All right guys, so now we're gonna cover instrumentation. This here is a Delta T, uh, one example of a dual probe instrument. Uh, a lot of the tips or tricks and things we're gonna cover in today's video will work for all dual probe instruments regardless of what type you use. This is just what we have available to us now. So uh, remember there's, there's two probes on this one, uh, detecting temperature and there's a needle in the middle that is what the doctor is reading as you're scoping along the neck. Some things you want to keep in mind, especially uh, specific to this area and the cervicals. Uh, these yeah, little yellow rubber pieces here represent those spinal nerves that we're trying to uh, get our thermocouples over. So in the cervicals, if you bring those probes in too close, you're just going to be over the bone when you actually want to be out wide over those nerves. So in the cervicals, get your probes out nice and wide. That way you can get over those nerves that you're trying to get your readings over. Another thing to keep in mind is you don't want to start at C7 and scope your way up. You want to give yourself a, like a running start, give yourself a, some space to lead off of. So I usually try to get down to about T4 and start scoping up from T4. So remember, you're going to follow the curve of the spine, both as far as scoliosis goes from this profile. You're also going to follow the curve based on the side profile like that. So I don't want to keep this would be an example of keeping my scope parallel to the ground the whole way up. You don't want to do that. You want to follow the curve of the neck. You want to follow that lordosis. So at around C7, my, my scope should be pointing downwards like that a little bit. As I scope up, it starts to flatten out, and then it'll start to point up as I get closer to those upper cervicals. So remember, start down here around T4, give yourself that, that running start, and follow that kyphotic curve going into that lordotic curve and let your scope follow that curve as it goes along and keeping those probes out wide. Uh, next, I'll show you on a patient so you see what it looks like on a real person. All right, guys, so first things first, got to turn the scope on. 
Uh, so I'm going to be scoping uh, on Mason here. Generally speaking, when we're, when we're scoping the cervicals, we're going to scope going upwards. Okay? Uh, one common mistake that people make is either going too fast or too slow. So keep that in mind. I know for myself, I generally go too fast. So I'll have to remind myself to slow down. It's about, a lot of sources will say, about three seconds per inch. Remember what I said earlier, I want to start down here in, in about her T4 area and start scoping up. Uh, she's not wearing a gown right now, so uh, pretend I'll start it down there. I'll start as low as I can, which is probably about like her T2 area right there. And remember, I'm going to follow that lordotic curve of her, of her cervicals. And I'm going to go even pressure on both probes gliding up. And I want to make sure that there's no air leaks. I'm following that lordosis. So you see here at her upper cervicals, now I'm kind of angled upwards. Whereas when I'm, at, when I'm down here, when I get to about C7 right there, my, my probe is kind of pointing down. Then it starts to flatten out until it starts to point up. And I'll be reading the, the needle as it's scoping up. And uh, what I'm looking for is a break, not a heat swing. So the, the needle will kind of sway back and forth depending on the heat in her neck. But what I'm looking for is a quick flick in one direction and the bounce back. So I don't care about the needle swinging like that. What I care about is a flick, just like what my finger just did right there. So keep in mind, follow the curves. Don't let any air leaks into those probes. Don't go too fast. And uh, no air leaks. Don't let, don't let, uh, you don't want to let the, so this would be an example of, like right here, I have my, my thumb closed on the probe. If I don't keep even pressure on both sides, if I break that seal right there, we can let some air in and that would ruin the, that would ruin our reading. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, comment on the video and uh, hopefully we can help you out. Uh, hope you learned something and make sure you practice. Thanks guys, bye. All right.